just a quick warning, there are some pretty light spoilers about the game in this video. So if you're not interested in spoilers, maybe come back to it a bit later. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the mods I'm using for my current playthrough of Final Fantasy XII, which over on my main channel, I'm doing a many multi-part series going over. And I wanted to document exactly how I've modified and tweaked the game. One, to be honest about where my version of the game actually differs from vanilla. As much as I like to explore vanilla and compliment Square on everything they've done, there are things I feel... Uh, really needed to be changed about FF12, which I've done with mods. So I want to show all of that off. And also, I kind of want to produce this to give credit to the people who made the mods and give people an opportunity to make their own mods set up exactly the same as mine if they want to have an identical experience to me, which is actually something I kind of warn against. And you'll see why as we go along, because in particular, two mods are mods I made myself which are buggy and messy and unbalanced likely and might not be producing as good of a time as it looks like I'm getting on the videos. And again, I'll divulge more of that as we go forwards. But there are some very real, very awesome mods here that I do recommend to people. So first of all, what you're looking at is Vortex. If you know anything about Final Fantasy XII modding, you know that nowadays people recommend using Vortex. I suggest you guys download that, learn a little bit about how it works. Maybe you're using it for other games already. There were other methods of modding from the past. There's something called Drac Lab, which people don't really recommend anymore. And people as well at one point used to just inject new files straight into Final Fantasy 12's VBF. So the VBF is like the big data folder that contains all the information about the game. There is a browser that you can download and I recommend people get it. It has the opportunity to inject files back in. Well that can damage your install and do all kinds of nasty stuff and cause you to have to fix it again through Steam or whatever. It's just a nightmare. I recommend Vortex and in particular with Vortex there are two amazing extensions the community's made. First of all, the external file loader, which has been a massive help to me as a modder. It's meant I can swap it, hot swap changes without even closing the game down and actually see their effects. And then the other really amazing extension is the Final Fantasy XII Lua Loader, which allows you to basically add new scripts and interesting things to the game, which people over in the Sky Pirates Den Discord modding community have helped me out with massively. One of my own mods actually includes a little script that uses this. So really, really, really nice. I recommend both these extensions and Vortex. Then you're pretty much ready to go. So then let's look at the mods that I've installed in no particular order. Let's start off with the FF12 FOV uh, changer. This is something that I've been using. This is from the user FF Griever, who has done so much for this modding community. It's unbelievable. Uh, and what this makes allows you to do is mess with the game's FOV. He describes here how it's set by at 60 degrees by default and with right control and page up and page down you can uh, fiddle it up and you can fiddle it down. In my playthrough, you might think that I've actually got this to move it to 90 FOV. People always think about 90. The thing is, playing at 90 or even higher is usually something I only really associate with first person games. Where if you are playing with a really restricted FOV, like many of these old PlayStation 2, frankly, games had, it can feel, make you feel really kind of sick. When you play on third person, I don't think that's necessarily always needed. I actually have used this to behind the scenes in several parts lower the FOV so that I can get a bit closer to the character so that the game feels a little bit more immersive. I'm not joking. And if you squeeze it down low enough, you can get some really weird effects. If you pull it out enough, you can get some really weird effects. In fact, the screenshot that they provide here on the, the Nexus you'll see is actually super zoomed out. So yeah, if you want to play the game really zoomed out, if you want as much information on field as possible, you can use this to do that. I kind of don't recommend going too crazy with any op option on it though because you end up seeing beyond the map boundaries, you end up breaking the flow that the devs were intending, right? I only like to enhance what Square Enix was going for rather than betray or replace it. And definitely pulling the FOV back. I did a playthrough where I played maybe half the game on a really, really wide FOV. It just didn't feel right in the end. It really didn't. It made the game feel a lot more like a strategy game. But maybe that's not what you're going for. So anyway, that's one of the mods that I'm using. And I think it is fantastic. The next one to talk about is the Insurgents Bountiful Bundle. Now this one is really, really incredible. Uh, this is actually probably my top recommendation. If you're just going to pick up one mod, 
get the Insurgents Bountiful bundle. So you'll see that it does require both the Lua Loader and the External File Loader extensions for Vortex. So it's got links. You'll be able to get through everything here. This is made by Zavin, who, by the way, helped me out so much with my own little product project. It's, it's insane. This was one of the guys that was really, really helpful specifically to me on the Sky Pirates Den. And so what this allows you to do first is a ton of stuff as a modder, but even just as a player, you can uh, enact some interesting changes. So here I will in fact show you if I hit reinstall uh, and we just hit update, you'll see you get all these different options, not all of which I'm using. In fact, I've been very, very slight with what I'm using here. First of all, you've got the party extension. This lets you mess with, like, who's a guest and who's a party member. You can have all guests, or you can have all party members. You can equip and unequip the stuff of your guests and your summons as well, for what it's worth. Down here, basically running the party extension allows you to change who you're controlling in Towns and Outposts. So you're not just Vine anymore. You can run around as other people in Towns and Outposts. You can have your full party out in Towns and Outposts, which is pretty incredible as well. There's this cheat section, which in one of the videos I'll talk about, every time you level up, it's actually randomized what stats you get. This means you're guaranteed to get the perfect bonus. Uh, some enemies, you're not allowed to Libra, but this will allow you to ignore that functionality. This one I'm actually using in my playthrough. This one I do have ticked on. It's uh, a little cheaty, I suppose. Unlimited quickening, summon times, foes drop everything, foes are always chaining. All kinds of really, really fun and weird things you can do. Up here, though, you can disable the minimap. Now, I've actually been using that. Or alternatively, you can disable the interference that appears in areas with dense mist. You can disable auto pause as well, which I'm also using. Every time you alt tab out of the game, by default, it just pauses. And it's kind of annoying for certain situations. Especially while I was modding myself and while I was prepping stuff and just doing little test playthroughs. This was kind of irritating, so I ended up getting rid of this. True invisibility is a one-size-fits-all way of making vanish work as you'd expect. I don't know how it, it functions under the hood, uh, but I've also implemented my own little method of this, so I don't use this anymore. But I did have true invisibility on for a very long time. A very clean way of doing that. You can actually disable the autosave feature if you don't like that. You want some tension back in the game and you know that you're not going to be able to have the self-control to not load those saves. You can turn off the speed mode as well if you want to go back to the PS2 feeling edition. You can run a lot of these and then combine with like a license board change to kind of really get... And, and I think there's a, a shop mod as well that you can install. If you do all these things, you can kind of get the game very, very close back to what it was on PC. Uh, PS2, sorry. And so, yeah, I think that's the main stuff that I'm using. Ignore anti-Libra, disable the auto-pause, disable the uh, mini-map, and that's about it, I think. Quick shout-out to Daedalus's Cutscenes Unleashed mod. So, this is a UI edit mod that I was using for a long time until I learned how to mess with this stuff on my own and then I made my own version of it which is kind of integrated into something else in Vortex. So I do not have this installed anymore but you guys might like to use this. This specifically might be my favorite mod of all in that it removes the black bars in the CGI cutscenes and lots of different areas around the UI, frankly, that cover up really gorgeous detail, and it is incredibly good. So, yes, at a later date, I kind of learned how to open this in Visual Studio Code and, and mess with it myself. I don't have it installed, but it's a really fun one. I mean, look at these before and afters. It's nuts! I talk about this a lot in my videos. Next is actually a texture pack that I've been using. Uh, so this one's the HD Environment and Structures Textures Work in Progress. So this is being made by No Trust K. And right as I came to the scene, this guy was uploading a lot. I haven't really seen how many updates he's been doing recently. He's on version 0.0.8 at the moment. On my playthrough, I'm actually down at 0.0.7. It's not because I think 0.0.7 is better or anything. I actually don't have much an eye for aesthetic. It's just that I never went back to update, so I'm kind of leaving it there. But yeah, this basically will update, as you can see from the image section here, uh, a lot of the environment textures and tweak them through. So this is 0.7. This is uh, point. So this is the old version of the mod, I guess. This is point seven. This is point eight, which you can see actually brings a little bit more detail out. Again, you might find halfway through the series, I update and I go to the newest version as well, just just because. Now he's actually done loads of mods like this. There's one that changes the characters, and there's one that change all kinds of things. I've just gone with the environment because this was the one I could see the most impact. For a lot of them, I just I, I can't really see very much difference at all with my eyes. 
because I don't have that much attention to detail for that stuff. But it's a fantastic series. I recommend all of them, and the guy's working really hard with it. And, you know, some kind of nice little texture pack that improves the way things look, especially playing at nice highlight resolutions. Like, my series is at 2560 by 1440. That's, uh, that's just a bonus to me. So, yeah, really, really good, and I do recommend it. So let's talk next about one of my two mods. I made two different things. One of them is really small and compact. Uh, as I speak to the microphone, I haven't actually put it on the Nexus just yet. I'll get around to doing that very shortly. You should be able to find uh, it up there by the time this video is there. It's this small sound mod. Uh, so I, when I was modding, I was looking through a lot of the audio files. There's this amazing tool they made that lets you inject and replace and swap all kinds of audio around. And, my god, guys, the amount of sound effects that are in this game that sound really good and really interesting and really cool that you would just never recognize or know about. There's thousands of files. And the reason for that is because quite often the music balance is really high or the combat sounds in particular are really high. In a specific, there is one sound effect in vanilla Final Fantasy XII that plays whenever you're casting a spell. I'm not going to make the noise with my mouth, but it is a really, really recognizable, very loud casting animation. And the thing is, that as you play the game, your your, car your party members are going to be casting spells. They're going to be using abilities and techniques and things. And you're going to hear this sound effect over and over. I really do not think it's an exaggeration to say you're probably going to hear it anywhere between 10 to 20,000 times a playthrough. The same super loud sound that doesn't really signify anything happening beyond you're charging a thing. So I just think it's a horrendous effect that overcrowds most of the rest of the audio. In particular, in my playthrough, I'm running the Struggle for Freedom Overhaul, which we'll get to in just a second. And that adds some spells that you really spam a lot, like the, sh the ability Shades of White. So all you're hearing is just this noise over and over and over again, again and again and again. So I muted it. At first, I thought I would just make it really quiet because I still want you guys to hear everything. But the sound is even kind of similar to other sounds in the game. Muting it made the combat way better. Now, if you're casting a spell, what you hear from that spell is the specific sound of the spell going off more than anything else. And it just makes the game flourish, really, in terms of its audio scape. You really get to pick up more new and interesting experiences with your ears. So, yeah, I made that change. And I also thought, do you know what? There's probably a bunch of other little things that could change as well. Maybe I can bring the footsteps sounds up or down or the ambient noises. Maybe I can shuffle them around. So I called it the better sounds mod. But to be honest with you, I haven't been inspired with any other really cool changes to make. If anyone has any ideas, maybe you can throw them at me. Or hell, just make your own version of this and put it up on the Nexus. I don't care. Uh, so yeah, it, this is basically just muting the cast sound effect. And I am playing with that. A little tweak I made for myself. So, then there's two big mods on this list. There is the Struggle for Freedom, and then there's WP's SFF Tweaks and Monster mod, also a horrendous title. So, let's talk about the Struggle for Freedom. This is an absolutely enormous mod from the user Eternal248. Now, I've actually talked to this guy quite a lot. If you guys go to his Steam page for the mod and you drop a post in the forum, he'll respond in moments. If you type a, a post here, you'll see there's 1,800 messages. He will respond in moments. If you message on Discord, he'll respond in moments. The guy is ludicrously professional. He's made a big overhaul mod, not just for this game, but for the tactics game set in Evil East as well. So he's done a lot of work. Uh, and so he's basically gone through, tried to make the uh, combat for Final Fantasy XII a little bit more interesting. And the class design and the job balance and stuff a little bit more interesting. Tried to bring it back to the PS2 kind of difficulty so that enemies are alive long enough to use their abilities. The main big change is everything in the game has like double health and 1.3 times stats. Then beyond that, he's changed magics and he's changed equipment and really used the the fruit of all these tools that people have been making uh, to produce something quite extraordinary. He has got very, very big plans. Right now, as I talk, the mod is on version 1.9.1. .1. I think he's about to do a hotfix that's going to put it to 1.9.2. Um, and he's, he's kind of looking for this big 2.0 release, which I think he's hoping to release many months down the line. Uh, and in 2.0, I think he's adding uh, blue magic and like taking skills from monsters if he can. I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to promise features or anything that he's not going to be able to get in. But he's got big ideas, all right. 
and who knows how crazy different this mod will be two years from now. If you're watching this video in 2022, 2023, you should go and have a look at some of the changes he's made. A lot of his changes are not completely in line with producing something that feels vanilla. So the mod was a little bit outside of what I wanted for my playthrough. But it is amazing. And I really, really would recommend people do it. Now, what's really important as well is he's given you the option of playing with the original PlayStation 2 board. Or rebalancing the new jobs from the Zodiac Age and the International Zodiac job system. So if you like the Bushi, and if you like the Knight, and if you like the Machinist and all of those, then he will just rebalance them so that they're not horrendously broken in a world where you can multi-class, right? So this was something I very nearly played with on my playthrough, the, just the rebalanced version of them. Or you can play with them completely unchanged. And finally, you can play with his new jobs, which come in two flavors. There's one that is a very linear path. That's what he calls the struggle path. And I demo that in one of my videos where it's, you know, it's like the Final Fantasy 13 Crystarium. And then he's got one that gives you some more choice, which is the freedom job, which is basically what I'm playing. Um, and so, yeah, and then he gives a specific job to each character so that every character has a specific role and does specific stuff. It's like Balthier, I think, is the best example here. Balthier's job gives him all the item laws and, you know, ether laws and phoenix laws and potion laws and remedy laws. And he is the only guy that can equip the accessory, the Nihoa Paloa. And uh, I think that's how, I'm, <laughs> how we say the Nihoa Paloa. I haven't looked that up yet. Uh, so and so he's like an item god, right? And that's kind of Balthier's big thing. And he throws items quick, but he shoots with guns slow. So there's a nice balance there. And, you know, everything that they're doing is kind of related, not just to their role in this game, but the rest of this game's alliance. So, for example, in Revenant Wings, which I've never played, I think Pinello comes through as like a dancer. So he called Pinello the dancer. And, uh, and you know, that he's trying to hit the lore of all the games all at once, which is something I'm really interested in, and SFF does a lot. So, yeah, it's really, really good. There's so much documentation. He's been so rigorous. One of the biggest changes to me is the swapping of hand bombs, a whole weapon category, for knuckles. So you can kind of get an unarmed playstyle instead of bombs, which is just weird and vanilla, frankly. And I think it's a really cool idea, even if it does take us away from a vanilla experience. And yeah, it's just, it's a great mod. So this is what I'm using. I don't think it's appropriate for me here to try to get through all the changes on this. Because it, it's nuts. It's massive. When you download it, you'll see all of the documentation he offers in terms of like what espers go where and all kinds of stuff. So there you have it. Uh, the struggle for freedom. Finally, there is a mod that I have made called the SFF Tweaks and Monster Mod. This is basically really buggy and is not balanced and is kind of terrible in a lot of ways. But this is my attempt at tweaking, keeping the best of SFF, but also making the game feel as much like vanilla FF12 as possible. The other thing, now I'm, I'm not here to talk crap about SFF or anything like that. For me personally, SFF is really good at regular enemy balance. Like, as you're running around the world, the enemies that fight you, as, you know, you're out in the Narmienza or whatever, they, they all feel perfect. And especially there's a moment after Mount Baromaces where the game's balance gets so good. Like, they're really challenging you, and you've really got to figure out, like, what's your team doing? What gambits are you setting up? It's excellent for regular encounters. However, I think SFF's general double health 1.3 times stat thing doesn't really do enough for the bosses. The bosses are still really, unfortunately to me, not that great. So I, in, in specific, after making a bunch of tweaks for my own preferences on the struggle for freedom, I went through and improved the boss encounters hand tailored. So I went through and did my own playthrough where I got up to the Still Shrine of Miriam, hand tweaking every single boss, giving them slightly different abilities or slightly different mechanics and just improving their stats basically. Keep, keeping everything in line with vanilla to make the bosses a threat unless you're doing that specific thing they're weak against, which is to me, what's fun, you know, so that, that actually fighting and getting the gear and stuff as you go really matters. So this is kind of my boss mod, my monster mod as I called it, and then I made a few other tweaks to random monsters in the world. So what I built was kind of a personal mod for my own playthrough with two ambitions. One, to refine SFF stuff 
back to a vanilla feel and two to look at the bosses uh, then also I kind of got a bit carried away and ended up doing a bunch of other little tweaks that I thought made the game a lot lot more fun uh, which I'll run through with you guys in a second now I want to say it took me about two weeks to do this and I was relentlessly asking people over on that poor discord community for help and they constantly gave it to me so I'm a complete outsider I'm not really a modder I'm not really a big part of the FF12 community but I was able to come in build this amazing thing for a playthrough and get out and those guys I owe everything to really you know it's it's not my work as much as it's their help allowing me to do the things I wanted to do one important thing about my mod is that it really isn't well balanced I do have bugs in there and it is not finished. I still, as I'm playing through with my YouTube series, am tweaking and refining bosses as I go. As I said, I only got as far as the Still Shrine of Miriam. It's not all done. So if I scroll down through my documents here of different changes with the game, you'll see they randomly stop at a certain point. There are no changes. So while I will put this on the Nexus for you all to play along with, it is not finished. And it will not be finished until the YouTube series itself gets beyond those bosses and stuff I still haven't done. There are bugs, so buyer beware. Some of its minor tweaks to things that SFF will probably fix itself. Like for example, SFF gives you some special weapons, but they don't have inventory sale va value, so you can't ever get rid of them and they're just a bit weird. Well, I fixed that. There were some weird description issues that I fixed. That, that stuff over time, probably Eternal will resolve himself. This uh, tweak mod has the black bar change I mentioned from before. Uh, SFF actually changes the main menu to a different thing, so I kind of put that back to vanilla. Now, my mod does a ton of stuff with Rare Game, which I love, but is often super overlooked and missed by the player base. I didn't want that for my YouTube series. I wanted you guys to see as many of it as you possibly could. Now, a user over on the Discord by the name of Raiden showed me how to implement like a notification system for when they've spawned, which I kind of implemented at some points, but was also buggy. I had a problem, uh, bugs because of my own incompetence. I had a problem with Japanese text appearing in game, so it's kind of half assed honestly. I did do a thing, though, where on the world map you can see where rare, rare game appears around the world which I think was also very effective and you'll see as the series goes along. I did quite a few combat changes, balance changes, making things more accurate. Like I found that if you're casting blind and it misses and it misses like three times in a row then it's really frustrating you just wish you DPS things down so now blind doesn't feel fun to use. So it's more accurate and other things like that are more accurate and more viable to use. I actually changed a lot about white magic and resurrection because frankly graveyard rushing in difficult bosses is boring as hell and is just very very hollow to me so I, I actually made quite a few balance changes on that. This was a really cool change that needed the lure loader uh, with mischarge so you don't get mischarge from save crystals anymore meaning that you get much more closer to a traditional Final Fantasy limit break system or like overdrive system where you actually have to charge this stuff up. Generally that means run around a ton in FF12 but still it's pretty good. I made battle harness uh, innate and enemies combo more and inflict their conditions more so you all the enemies feel very different from one another you're going to have a lot more effects on you but also combat looks a lot more dynamic as people counter and parry and dodge and block and all that kind of stuff a lot more uh, traps were really weak in sff so i bumped those up some more combat balance status durations uh have been tweaked some were overpowered some are weak some more skill cast time changes now this was a big change for libra you guys can pause and read all the specific effects if you like but libra I actually found the game was really interesting when you didn't have infinite access to Libra. Also, there was a problem where in the game, if you don't have Libra up, you're not meant to know how tanky an enemy is. You're not meant to know how close it is to dying. But there's all these health bars everywhere that show you anyway, because you can see how much damage you're doing proportionally. It's ridiculous. So anyway, I moved the game back to the closer vanilla original intent that Square Enix themselves never ever properly realized. Where if you don't have Libra and their health is question mark, question mark, question mark, you don't know whether they're about to die. And so then you get less Libra in the game. Libra's still there, it's just much later. And instead you get Libra moats. So I'm pretty happy with all of that stuff. I tweaked some of the magics around, some of the ma magics that mysteriously became time when they should have stayed arcane through the version differences swapped. Um, and so, yeah, here I am just listing out the different combat balance changes I made for each category. So there is a quickening change that I made in SFF. Eternal made all the quickenings 
appear super late game. Like, you just don't get quickenings for the game pretty much until really late in. And that's because he couldn't really find a way to balance them. I don't think I found a way to balance them either. But I didn't like the idea that my viewers wouldn't get to see quickenings until super late. When in the regular versions of the game and all those other additions, you get them nice and early. So I've made quickenings easy to get on the uh, license board again. But I've nerfed the weak ones. In that they take a long time to activate now and they don't even do as much damage. And then the medium ones are still difficult to get and the, the high tier ones are difficult to get. When we get to the high tier ones, they're unchanged. But, you know, they're hard to find. So that's good. Uh, I also changed concurrences a bit. Made them basically easier to see new varieties. Um, uh, so that there's a bit more variety in the videos. Here was basically one of the changes that inspired it all. He'd removed hand bombs. I want you guys to see hand bombs, so I put hand bombs back in the game. Some tweaks to his equipment changes. And uh, a particular one with a battle harness because of my whole uh, counter change here. And just anywhere where the UI got a bit weird and felt a bit iffy, I tweaked those. Uh, now, I did some changes to Espers. Mostly, he has a big plan for Espers in 2.0, which he told me about. That I've basically tried to copy what he's going to do with his consent. But then I've made some other changes with the license boards. The license boards, I've done a lot of different stuff. I renamed what the jobs are so that they're not spoilery for my video series. Um, particularly Ash's. Uh, Ash's job, I think, was a little bit spoilery before and stuff like that. It let you know who was going to join your party too early and stuff. I also added a new job, the Zodiac, uh, Zodiac Keeper, which you only get once you have all the Espers. Basically, I changed the license board so that all the mechanics that Square have implemented on it will be seen in my series. Some of those go away in Eternal Zone stuff, but basically my series is based on his struggle boards. I've just moved stuff around a bunch for combat balance and, and tweaked things and, and added different stuff. There's actually loads of information here about how I changed those. They'll come through in the main series, but basically you get to choose between what Esper goes to what each character again and you can do it. There's just a bit more strategy. It's just stuff that I thought was fun, basically. And I, I've listed a ton of this stuff out here. Loads of it. It's uh, really, really fun messing with jobs. If you want to get into Final Fantasy XII modding, I really recommend you play with jobs. It's fun stuff. Uh, so yeah, then general enemy changes. They all basically will combo more. And if they have a chance to inflict poison and Square had it at like a 4% chance and they only get two attacks in before they kill you, I've bumped that up so that you actually see the poison, you know, so that stuff actually happens. Um, oh yeah, I did a change to vision. So, do you remember the Bountiful Bundle had a true invisibility option? Well, I went through and changed every enemy in the game so that they don't instantly hear you unless they were specifically meant to because Square had designed it that way. So, I went through every enemy and I changed all of the detection systems so that Vanish works properly and you can stealth around and play with enemy cones of vision and stuff like that, which was not evident in any edition of the game, really, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, what else have I done? Uh, yeah, just some, some enemies are a bit tankier and a bit bigger and a bit different. Just because they're, it, the game can get a bit grindy and a bit of a slog and a bit boring in certain places. So, like, when you get to the, uh, Nam Yensa Sansi after the Ogre Yensa, or, you know, some, some enemies look a little bit bigger than they otherwise would. Rare game have had loads of changes. Rare game now are really, really likely to spawn and you get notified when they spawn. And if you're using Poach... Which SFL, SFF already made Poach really good. But now if you Poach Rare Game, you are guaranteed their Rare Drop. So all the gear is the same as Square Enix designed it. You're just not gambling on a 5% chance for something. You actually can do it using Poach, which now is a valuable skill. I never changed the trophy game side quest. Um, and then bosses. So then every single story boss. I haven't changed the clan mark battles really. And I haven't changed... Uh, like I say, the trophy game stuff. But all the story bosses, I've redefined them and sort of bumped them up so that they're fun and interesting experiences. And in the change logs, I've also given people a little tip, you know. So, like, the early stuff. Cast magic from the back on the air cart or Remora, the first boss, for example. So, if anyone get were to play this, and I don't know whether anyone ever will because, again, it's buggy and just nonsense. Uh, you know, I've got these little tips in here. And so, that's it, really. Um... A list of all the rare game changes, a list of all the story bosses, which I haven't finished yet. So, yeah, that's my mods. The way I've made this is for my playthrough and my party, and that's it. So, it might be a horrendous experience for other people. Uh, and so, it might not be as fun as it looks on the videos. 
I don't even real, really feel particular like, ownership over this stuff. More it was people on the Discord helping me implement a lot of it. So I don't know really, but this is what I'm using and those are the big ticket changes. And I wanted you guys to understand where my playthrough deviates from vanilla. So there you have it guys. Thanks very much for watching. Do be sure to head over to the FF12 Nexus. You can find all these mods there. Um, there's not many mods on there at all, to be honest. You could just browse all of them lifetime. And pretty much everything I've talked about will come up on the list for you. Thanks, guys. Thanks to the community. And I'll see you next time.